Hi friends, welcome to uh, our latest little application of um, a different kind of force. Uh, this is about buoyant force and what's called Archimedes principle. Um, in our text, there's where you can find it. Um, we're talking about what makes things float, why some things float and why some things don't. All right, we're going to base the rest of uh, the next couple of slides on an assumption that we've gotten through this in class. And if the numbers we see here are a little bit different than what you saw in class, it's just because I had to do this before we had a class. But what we did was we weighed a bowling ball. So we started here, we weighed a bowling ball, and by my, uh, by my measurements, we got a weight. Ding, 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 ding. We got a weight of uh, 69 newtons. All right, then we dunk this thing in water. And after that, um, what I got, again, if this is different than what you, than what we saw, well, you just have to bear with me and maybe use these numbers, I don't know. Um, but I did it on Friday, a few days ago, and I got, once we weighed it in water, we got 17.5 newtons. Okay, so it appears, it seems like, or, you know, we can even talk about that idea again of apparent weight. It seems like that thing weighs less in water. Well, it doesn't, um, but we'll talk about why that is. All right, so if we look at a free body diagram for both cases here, well, there's certainly an mg force, and in this case, a tension force. Right? Both are equal and opposite. Okay? Well, in this case, we still have the same mg force. This, uh, this guy here, the scale, doesn't actually read weight. It reads the tension that's, that scale is pulling with. All right? In a lot of cases, we typically don't weigh things submerged in water. Typically, those things just happen to be equal. All right? Just like a bathroom scale doesn't read necessarily your weight. It reads normal force. All right? This kind of scale reads a tension force. In this case, when it's in water, that tension is much smaller. And that's because of the presence of another force that we'll call buoyant force, or that is called, that is buoyant force. Okay? Um, and, well, we can actually figure out how big that buoyant force is. All right? We know that here the tension is 69 newtons because the weight is 69 newtons. So here, if this is still 69 newtons, and our tension is now only 17 and a half, that's, yeah, 17 and a half newtons, that means that the buoyant force is 51 and a half newtons. That's a lot of force. All right, where does it come from? Well, um, Archimedes principle says that um, fluids exert buoyant forces on objects. Submerged in the fluid, I could probably word this better if I thought about it first. Um, here's the important part, equal to the weight of the displaced fluid. Or I'll say FB is mg um, fluid displaced. Now, we're proving that, are we? We should be, um, in a couple of ways. Yeah, you know what? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, now, um, what hopefully we did, or hopefully what you can do, aha, yes. What hopefully you can do with that is what's on the next page. So let me, give me a minute. Forgive me, I'm sort of thinking through this as we go. One thing you'll see a lot of is a... Hey, yeah, thank you. And the different expression for the mass. Again, mass of the fluid. Um, and 
because when we talk about, it's not so typical to talk about masses of fluids, in this case a liquid like water, but what it is more common to talk about for fluids are um, volumes of fluids. All right? So we can relate mass and volume, and we can say that the volume of a fluid is, what is it? Mass, no, 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 we have that other thing, right? Oh yeah, we have that thing, uh, density, density. Density is mass per unit volume. V is not velocity, right? V is volume. This is density. We call that a row. Mass. Volume. So it's very typical for us to write mass as rho V. Okay? Let me just move. Ah, okay. So, uh, you know, volume we're going to measure in, let's see, mass in kilograms, volume in cubic meters, and therefore density is measured in, well, kilograms per cubic meter, right? Kilograms per cubic meter times cubic meters, of course, gives us kilograms. All right, so it's very common for you to see an expression for buoyant force that looks like this. Rho, fluid, V, fluid, G. Rho, fluid, V, fluid, G. I keep saying fluid like a maniac because you'll see cases where a thing, there are different volumes and different densities. You have to make sure that we're applying Archimedes' principle when we talk about buoyant force and that that force is equal to the weight of the displaced fluid, which involves the density of the fluid, not of some object submerged in it. Okay? Let's work with that. And let's work with that on the next page here where we say, all right, so if that's the case, then what's the volume of this ball? All right, what we know is that our FB, um, again, I'll, I'll start over with a free body diagram here. Well, we have this MG, we have this tension force from the spring scale that's pulling up, not too big, uh, and we have this buoyant force. Now, buoyant force is rho fluid V fluid G, which we know is uh, 51 and a half newtons, right? All right, so we want the volume of the ball, the volume of the ball. Well, notice this expression has a volume of the fluid, and so we're sure this means or refers to volume of displaced fluid. How much, how much fluid is pushed out of the way? Well, you might be able to see in this case, since the object, the bowling ball here, is completely submerged, that is equal to the volume of the object. I say object submerged. However much of the object is submerged, well, that volume is equal to the volume of the displaced fluid. Okay? You know what? Let's ask a better question. What's the, uh, let's call it diameter. Let's say what's the diameter of the ball. Ugh, that's a mess. Diameter. So we can write this in this case, that FB is rho fluid. Um, the object, I write it like this, object submerged, G. So this says we could find the volume of the object submerged. Diameter will live in there somewhere as FB divided by rho fluid G. Well, volume of a sphere, here's one you're going to need to get familiar with, 4 thirds pi r cubed is FB over rho fluid G. We can find the radius, 3 FB over 4 pi rho fluid G, or the cube root of all that stuff, 3 FB over 4 pi blah, 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 blah. 
And then, of course, the diameter is going to be 2 times the radius. All right, so you figure that out, and let's, let's measure it against what we get. Measure it against, yeah, what your, what your theoretical answer is here. I got pretty darn good results uh, when I ran through it myself. Okay? Okay, let's look at a couple other uh, examples. One like this. Something that's partially submerged. Now, I think I want to do this first. I do. I do indeed. I do indeed. We got a cube, uh, two meters on a side. There's its density. Completely submerged. Uh, what's the buoyant force? Well, remember, it's completely submerged. Um, we've got something like this. We've got, well, you know what? Forget about this. Forget about this uh, free body diagram. We know this. Buoyant force, rho fluid, V fluid, G. Well, you know what you're going to need, folks, is you're going to need, um, especially a couple slides back, you're going to need this, a nice constant that you do not have to memorize. There's never a number that you have to memorize. Rho of water is um, 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. 1,000 kilograms. Man, that's a lot. I mean, that's like a small car. But... A cubic meter is a heck of a lot of water. It's a box. It's a cube on each side. It's a lot of water. All right? That you'll need. You'll need that in lots and lots of examples. All right? So get that into your dome. Uh, yeah, we'll come back to that one. Now here, let's see, the buoyant force. Well, um, now, notice completely submerged. That means for us that... V fluid is the same as V object. Okay? Um, that means we can write this as FV is rho fluid, and that's rho of water. V object, which is, well, length times width times height, because it's a cube, times G. So I'm going to write this as, let's see, Fv is um, 1 times 10 to the third kilograms per cubic meter times 8 cubic meters times 10 meters per second squared. So uh, that's uh, 10 to 8, uh, 80,000 Fv. 80,000 newtons. Jeez Louise. That's a big force. That's a big cube, though. A cube two meters on the side, that's a big, big cube. That's a lot of displaced fluid. Okay? Let's make sure the units work. Let's see. Yeah, cubic meters, cubic meters, kilogram meters per second squared. Yep, that's a new good. Okay, now, if we want to keep it, keep it there, keep it where it is, um, what force is required? Well, that's going to mean that, let's see, there's an mg, there's a buoyant force, um, and they're not necessarily equal. Well, we know this is 80,000 newtons. mg, let's see. Well, we don't know this thing's mass, the block's mass, but we do know its volume and its density. So we can write this as rho object, the object, right? This is the mass of the object, g. So rho object, 750 kilograms per cubic meter. V object, 8 cubic meters. G, 10 meters per second squared. So that's 80, oh boy, that's, uh, uh, that's uh, six, 60,000 newtons. Right, notice it's three quarters of this because the density is three quarters of that density. Yeah? Yeah. All right, so that means that if it weighs 
if it weighs 60,000 newtons and there's an upward force of 80,000 newtons due to the weight of the displaced fluid, that means we've got to exert another downward force of 20,000 newtons to keep this thing in place. So maybe this is a block that's um, chained to the bottom of a tank or something like that. Okay? Well, then we cut that chain, right? We cut that chain. What does the block do? Well, then it accelerates. All right? So now we have FB up. We have MG down, but no chain. No, you know, this thing is allowed to move, and this thing accelerates. So we can say that FB minus MG equals MA. Again, this is M object. This is a M object. A object. A object. You know, I keep talking about these subscripts because it's real tricky. The hardest part of this unit is remembering to use the right, you know, the right um, density of the right thing, the right, you know, the volume of the right stuff in the right place. That's the tricky part. All right. The short story here is we know that um, A object is FB minus MG over M. Well, we already know the net force is 20,000 newtons. So this is, I'll just write as 20,000 newtons, right? FB was 80,000. The weight of the object was 60,000. Um, M object, well, rho object, V object. That's our 750 times 8. Uh, that's 60,000, right? No, 6,000, yeah, 6,000. So 6,000, so that's 20,000 newtons over 6,000 kilograms. 20 over 6 is what? 3.3? Okay? Now, this thing accelerates upward until it gets to a point where part of it comes out of the water. And when part of it comes out of the water, it starts to look like this. And eventually, it reaches an equilibrium condition where the part that's under the water is responsible for displacing some fluid. Right? When the whole thing was underwater, it displaced enough fluid, well, it displaced 80,000 newtons worth of water. Or wa it, just, it displaced water that weighed 80,000 newtons. Well, the thing, the object, weighs itself, um, object G, 60,000 newtons. So we need an upward force, a buoyant force, that's equal to that. We need a 60,000 newton buoyant force. Well, how could the buoyant force get smaller? It gets smaller. Remember, buoyant force is um, rho fluid v fluid g, which we write sometimes as rho fluid v object submerged g. So when the whole thing's underwater, and this is the whole 8 cubic meters, well, we get an 80,000 newton, uh, 80,000 newton uh, buoyant force, all right? But this thing, remember, weighs 60,000 newtons. So if we want a 60,000 newton buoyant force, it means that the volume of the object submerged has to, or the volume of the displaced fluid has to decrease. So we could say that our F B equals our mg. So I'd say when this thing reaches equilibrium, this is ding, 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 um, at equal, uh -oh, equilibrium. Can you read that? At equilibrium, this has to be true. Well, this is rho fluid, v fluid g. This is rho object, v object g.
get rid of the G's. Well, let's see. This is rho fluid V, the part of the object that's submerged, equals rho object V object. So we can eventually talk about how much of the object is submerged. Or the percent of it, really, the fraction of the whole volume. Well, notice that's equal to the ratio of those two densities. So the ratio of the part that's submerged to the total volume, in this case, is 750 kilograms per cubic meter over 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter, or 0.75, where three quarters of the object will be submerged. If and only if the ratio of their densities is 3 to 4. All right? What do you think about that? Trickiest, trickiest part. Make sure you know which volume and which density you're talking about. Buoyant force is always, 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 always Rho, fluid, V, fluid, G. V fluid is always, always, always the volume of the object, well, the part of the volume of the object that's submerged. Sometimes the entire object is submerged, and then it's just volume of the fluid equals volume of the object. But not always, not in this case. Okay? Okay. Is that? Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, here's that same, what fraction of the total volume? Sure, you know, we can just, you know, write down what we wrote down before, but um, you ought to be able to derive this. Let's see if we can derive this uh, or make sure. Well, give me an answer is the short story. And I would start with a free body diagram, all right? Start yourself with a free body diagram. I would ask that you not, you know, if you memorize this equation, which I would not suggest, you memorize that and you put that as the you know your final answer on a test you just write well sorry write you just memorize that equation I'll probably not give you full credit and I'll say where'd you get that how do you know that's true all right so I would solve this problem solve this problem by drawing or by starting with the free body diagram and doing a force analysis okay here's another one um, let's walk through this one together just a ridiculously stupid diagram, but what do you want from me? Uh, a frog in a hemispherical pod. Yeah, he just floats without sinking in a fluid, fluid of that density, uh, grams per cubic centimeter. If the pod has a radius uh, of six centimeters. Oh, yeah, we want to know what the mass of the frog is. There's the answer, 611 grams. All right, so we can start with a diagram a free body diagram. And we can say that if this thing just floats, uh, object, mass object G. Now, point force, nine times out of 10, rho fluid V fluid G equals M object G. Well, look, the G's go. We want the mass of the frog that's here, so let's get rid of those G's. This says the mass of the object is rho of the fluid. Well, that's water. Oops. Go ahead. There you go. Rho water. V fluid. V fluid. That's the same as the submerged objects uh, or the, the um, submerged volume, I guess you can call it. All right. So that's half a hemisphere. Half a hemisphere. Oh, no, it's not. It's this, I'm sorry, this is not row water, is it? It's just row. Um, and that's V, uh, v object submerged. 
So half a sphere, volume of a sphere, like we talked about, 4 thirds pi r cubed. So that means this is going to be rho for 2 thirds pi r cubed. Okay. Now, do we need to convert things, or do we need to convert things? Grams per cubic centimeter. All right. Well, this is, notice, 1.35 grams per cubic centimeter times 2 thirds pi r, uh, 6 centimeters. So we do 6 centimeters cubed. Right, and then our centimeters cubed and our centimeters cubed go away, and we're left with grams, so that's okay. That's good. So two thirds of pi is like two, right? Times six is like twelve. Uh, times one point. All right, sorry, we got a cubit. Dear, don't forget the cube. So yeah, do the math. You get six hundred and eleven. What's six cubed? Thirty-six times six, one ninety-six. Ugh, times all that stuff. Sure. Right, folks? Now, here, I believe, is a real bastard of a problem. Um, so I'd say give it a shot. Eh, you know what? You got it. You, you can do this part. You'll oh yeah, do this one. Do this one. Now, come on. This one. Do it. And you're going to find me radius of the ball from this part. Nope. Diameter of the ball. Find me diameter of the ball. All right. And then that last one we'll do together when you get back tomorrow. All right, folks. Adios.